Hello, I am Annie from Champagne Chaos and this is my very first YouTube video because I've had some requests to do a more in-depth tutorial on how I did this Ikea hack behind me. So I used Ikea halves to cabinets to do the built-in look and then I made this coffee bar in the middle. So the point of this video is to just take you through from start to finish. I'll try and keep it short, but make it thorough just in case you wanna recreate this for yourself. So when we first moved in, this wall used to have this big brown bulletin board on it, which I actually love the concept behind it because I'm assuming that they were using that as their command center, right? I needed a place to, to hide the things that we use every single day and a place to charge the vacuum. We had no outlets in any of our closets. Similar to their bulletin board idea, I just wanted something more functional and better looking. Our table was a little bit smaller and I was able to move it over to the corner. And so it left room for something as deep as cabinetry. I knew I needed something that was somewhat shallow in depth because we have a return air vent that I can't cover up and we just don't have a ton of walk space. So I chose the halves to cabinets because they were a decent depth and then the height worked with our nine foot ceilings. Obviously, if you go smaller, you can build it up in other ways, which is exactly what I did with the baseboard on the floor. And then I added the two by fours in between and underneath each upper cabinet for support, but also to give it a little bit of a boost up to the ceiling. And then I covered the gap at the top with crown molding. With these halves to cabinets, they are almost a perfect rectangle to work with, but they have a teeny tiny lip on the top and then like a perfectly squared base. So I flipped them upside down. So the perfect square bottom would be at the floor and at the ceiling, and then the little lipped edge would meet in the middle. When you're trying to make something look built in, the first thing you gotta do is remove the baseboard so that you can push whatever it is tightly up against the wall. The two by fours that I mentioned earlier that I used to beef up the height of the cabinets to bring them up to the ceiling, more importantly, served a purpose of security. I was able to screw those into studs and then I was able to screw up into the bottom of those two by fours and down into the top through the top and the bottom of the cabinets to really secure them in place. The backing of these cabinets is essentially glorified poster board. It's very thin. I knew I couldn't count on that to hold any kind of weight. I also put a piece of plywood across the back but again, I just didn't want to bank on only that. I feel like you can never be too secure and I just wanted to screw into as many studs as I possibly could. <laughs> that would so wrong. Once the frame was secured to the wall, then my next challenge was covering up those ugly two by fours. That's when I incorporated this fluted trim around the middle. I did crown up the top, which is just a one by four with a little cove molding glued to it to cover the gap because the one by four wasn't quite enough. And then I used the baseboards that the cabinets came with along the bottom. The middle, I used just what I had in my garage, which ended up fitting the two by two perfectly. I added some picture molding on the exposed side of the cabinets. I may eventually end up drywalling over this to make it truly look built in, but for now this works. The next step before painting, probably my least favorite step, but the most important step to take is all the finishing work. So caulking, wood filling, sanding, wiping it all down. That's what makes it look more professionally done is when all of that finishing work is done correctly. I think that Ikea, painting Ikea furniture could be a, its own video in itself. I feel like it's pretty controversial. I think that a lot of us have tried it and not had success with it. And so I think we're just not sure that it's actually possible. What I can do is show you what I did to paint these, how they're holding up, some of the tips that I've learned, but ultimately, I mean, I've only been living with this for about six months, so I might, I might have to report back. These half stick cabinets are supposedly made out of solid wood. That's how they're listed on the website. Zinsser Bin Primer is supposed to help the paint grip to all kinds of surfaces. And then when you prime it, you're supposed to take a high grit sandpaper, a fine sandpaper, and just go over top of it. I believe that the primer causes the wood, like the little hairs in the wood to stand up. And so that's what you're sanding away, but don't quote me on that. So you sand that away and then you wipe it down with a tack cloth and that should give you a smooth primed surface ready for paint. For the doors, I use these little triangles to prop them up. I think that they're made for thicker, um, 
you know, closet doors. I think I was lucky to get away without damaging any of the cabinets with these things, but they were pretty cool because they can be stacked, they could be flipped over. It was just a very convenient way of painting them. The paint color that I used is Magnolia Coffee Nook. So the Magnolia paint line color is Coffee Nook. It's confusing because I used a Benjamin Moore advanced trim paint because they did not have the Magnolia trim paint in stock when I went. So they had to color match for me. All you need to know if you wanted to recreate this is the color is Magnolia Coffee Nook and just make sure you're using a good trim paint. I did two coats of paint. I made sure to follow the directions on the can, to let it cure in between coats. I think that is very, very important. Once everything was painted and cured, I then put the cabinet doors onto the frame. Sounds pretty easy. It's Ikea, which means it's usually pretty frustrating at times, especially with the cabinet doors. I think that my goal down the road, I didn't have the budget to do it with this project specifically, but I would love to get custom doors at some point and use the same base and have this whole setup, but actually get solid wood nice doors down the road. You can tell, I mean, you can see a gap behind me, around it. I got it to line up as best as I possibly could, but it's just important to take, you know, take into consideration that this is, this is Ikea. As far as how it's holding up so far, especially the paint, there's only one cabinet that has a bunch of chips on it, and surprise, surprise, it's the kids' cabinet. I don't think we can blame that on Ikea. Every part of our house that is heavily used by the kids is scuffed up in one way or another. Like the area under the bar where they have breakfast is paints chipped like a ton and that's not Ikea. So I do also notice a little bit of chipping where the doors will rub. So I have had to adjust the doors a little bit here and there, making sure that it's not rubbing anywhere. With anything, I would assume that if there's chafing, the paint's gonna come off. I am thinking about trying to put a protective layer over top of it next time I touch it up so I can report back. The last component of this wall, the coffee bar in the middle, I knew I wanted a countertop, floating shelves. I knew I wanted to incorporate some warmth with the wood tones and the brass. I used pull wrap as my backsplash. I know it's kind of frustrating right now because pull wrap is sold out. I usually get it at Home Depot, depending on your local Home Depot. Like I, my local store will sometimes have the thinner sheets, but I think it's sold out in most places. So hopefully they restock that soon because it's a really fun detail to add and it's just so easy. So I did stain it dark walnut because we have other dark walnut accents in our house and I just like to kind of keep similar wood tones throughout. I did end up splurging a little bit on the countertop. I called a local quartz supplier and asked if they did remnant pieces and sure enough they did they cut a piece for me in like a week it was about 300 dollars, which was a little more than i wanted to spend but i think it's totally worth it to have a stone countertop i think it just feels upgraded floating shelves were a really easy diy tutorial i followed from angela rose home her blog post is linked in my blog post so i'll link all of the things so that you can follow the same blog post but you just take one by twos and you screw them into studs and then you wrap that basically in plywood one by two across the front to make it all look finished <laughs> there you go floating shelves i did not account for the thickness of the shelves and it would not have worked obviously with our coffee maker to have the shelf go all the way across so the asymmetrical shelves was a little unique and then using the guardrails also asymm asymmetrically <laughs> is that a word and those guardrails are actually pulls from cb2 but i love i just like love, love how that looks instead of using regular coffee hooks underneath the shelf and the reason I couldn't do that is because it's the plywood is too thin. I could not screw into the plywood underneath and expect it to hold any weight. I drilled a hole in the side of the cabinet and took a three foot metal rod and ran it all the way through. Did have to fill and sand and paint that hole that I made for the metal rod, but it went all the way through. Rub and buffed it gold to match and then hung the hooks on that, works great. I used a hole saw for the first time to drill a hole for the outlet, a more attractive outlet to bring to the top where the coffee bar is for the coffee machine. And then I used it through all of the cabinetry to get down below into a power strip that we have in the middle cabinet. We also added a little bit of a light feature. I don't know if I love it because the shelf kind of traps the light just above. So it only lights up the top shelf, but it's still a cool feature and it's there. 
This wood putty is my favorite to use on stained wood since wood filler typically doesn't take stain very well. And I did seal the backsplash just in case because we'll be making coffee here. I'm gonna wrap this up with the cost breakdown, the time it took. I think it was about $2,000 for this whole project. It took about a month, but that again was me having to record and edit and post to Instagram at the same time and then take care, I take care of my kids. So if you don't have to worry about kids or Instagram, you could probably do this in half the time. I had some people comment on the placement of the knobs and it is very tough for me to reach. I'm five feet tall. I guess I chose the look that I wanted over the functionality in that regard. And I've always, I spent a lot of time climbing on countertops and using chairs because I can never reach the top cabinets. So this is nothing new for me. If you lasted this long, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll be back later.